Okay, I'm going to do another one. See if you can try to generalize this technique. So the basic technique is we're going to draw a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate and then apply basic principles of static equilibrium to get the force on the gate. So here we have another problem. This one's done all in symbolic form. I really recommend that you work in symbolic form before you plug numbers in. You'll get much more park marks that way. This one, we're just after figuring out what the forces, what the horizontal and vertical forces are on this section of the, uh, of the surface AB. And this surface has radius R and the bottom here, the bottom of this semicircular surface has a height or a depth in the fluid of H. So we want to draw a hydrostatic pressure distribution on surface AB, and you want to derive expressions for the vertical and horizontal hydrostatic forces on surface AB, clearly indicating the directions of those forces. And we're going to take the tank as having a unit depth into the page. So this is a two-dimensional problem. Okay, so the first part is to draw the hydrostatic pressure distribution on this surface, AB. So we're going to start by drawing the pressure at A. Oh, and I've put some values in here. The pressure at A, point A is at depth H. So the pressure is going to be uh, gamma H. And now if you imagine the pressure at B, it's going to act normal to B, but it's, it's at a depth of H minus R. It's at a shallower depth. So it needs to be a smaller arrow. So once you've got those two basic arrows in, you can put the remainder of the pressure distribution in, uh, being careful to put them normal to the surface. And so if you were doing this on a midterm, I'd be looking to check that PA was visibly bigger than PB because pressure increases as you go down in the fluid, as you go to deeper depths. And you'd want to, I'd want to check to make sure that your arrows are reasonably perpendicular to the surface AB. So that's, that's part A. Next, we want to get expressions for the horizontal and vertical forces on curved surface AB. So the one thing you should get from these pressure distribution diagrams is we can see right away the directions of the forces, of the force of the water on the gate. You can see that the horizontal force, all of these arrows have a force to the left. So the horizontal forces of the water on the gate is going to be to the left. And you can see all of these arrows, except for the very bottom one here, have an upward component. So the net hydrostatic force on the on surface AB is going to be up. So that's one of the values of drawing these hydrostatic pressure distributions. The, the directions of the forces will become instantly clear. So we're going to make sure we use those directions in our final answers. Okay, so let's go after the expressions for the vertical and horizontal forces. We draw a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate. So I've picked this segment here, A, B, C, and I've redrawn it down here, A, B, C, and we have unit depth. So that's our isolated section of water. And we're going to put the forces on the water. So this face, B, C, is at, is at a depth in the water, so it's going to have a hydrostatic force, and it's going to be balanced by the force of the gate on the water. So those are the horizontal forces. They're going to be in line because there's only two forces and we can't have a moment. In the vertical direction, this face, AC here, is at a depth H, so it's going to have a pressure, a uniform pressure on the surface. Remember, pressure always acts normal to the surface and inward to the surface. So it just pushes on the surface. So this is FAC. We would have a weight of this fluid element, and then we'd have the force of the gate on the water. So those are the vertical forces. Now we've drawn our free body diagram, which I've reproduced over here. Let's do our static equilibrium. So let's consider first some of the forces in the horizontal direction equals zero. So we have that the horizontal force, FH, is just equal to the hydrostatic force on this surface, BC. There's only there's only two horizontal forces, FH and FBC, and they're in opposite directions, so they must balance. So all we have to do is calculate the, uh, to get the horizontal force is calculate the hydrostatic force on surface BC. This is a plane vertical surface, so it's going to be equal to the gamma times the height or the depth of the center of gravity times the area of this surface. So gamma, height of the center of gravity of surface BC, times the area of, of that vertical face, BC. 
these are very easy to calculate. This centroid here, the center of area for BC, is located halfway between here and here. That's R upon 2. So this distance from the free surface is H minus R upon 2. So that's the depth of the centroid of surface BC here. And the area of surface BC is just R times 1. This distance is R, and this distance is 1. So making the substitutions for gamma, HC, and ABC, we get this simple expression. And as we showed with our pressure distribution, the force of the water on the gate, the hydrostatic force, is to the left. So that's the answer for the horizontal component. Okay, let's do the vertical component. So I've reproduced the free body diagram again over here. We have three vertical forces, the hydrostatic force on surface AC, the weight of this quarter circular fluid element, and then the force of the gate applies to the water. And it's pretty simple to see that this vertical force uh, has to balance the hydrostatic force minus the weight. So FV equals FAC minus W. So the weight of the fluid element is going to be easy to calculate. It's just gamma times the volume. So let's get the, the force on this surface. which is going to be the pressure on this surface times its area. Now, this is a horizontal surface. AC is horizontal. So if you imagine this surface here, AC, it has a uniform pressure distribution. And the pressure is just equal to gamma H. So the force on this surface is just gamma H times the area, which is R times 1. So there's the force on surface AC. The weight of the fluid element, it's a quarter circle. So pi r squared divided by 4 times unit depth, this is volume, times gamma. And so now making the substitutions for FAC and W, we get a rather simple expression for the vertical force on surface AB. And again, we showed earlier that the hydrostatic force on the surface from the water is upwards. And that completes this problem.